So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how do you deal with failure in business and in life, right? I was 17 years old when I had my first business idea. I wanted to do this uh, seminar for a group of people, a group of 200 to 300 people. And I still had my 12th grade exams. And during the exams, I came up with this business idea that I'm going to throw this event where I will be talking about how to use the, the power that's inside of us to manifest our dreams. So what you see here on the YouTube channel, the work that I'm doing, I actually initially had this idea when I was 17, which is 12 years ago, I had this idea. And I just saw myself in front of a group of people speaking and their lives transforming. It's a vision that I had at that age. And at that time, I didn't have any baggage. So I just went in and I just executed. I booked a place, I booked a venue. I, uh, you know, wrote down on the pieces of paper what I'm going to talk about. And I decided that it's going to be a three day event where I would be speaking. And I just assumed uh, or I was naive enough to assume that people will just show up and uh, I will have I will just make a few phone calls and, you know, people will start coming into the hall and um, it will be a success and I'll, um, you know, charge a fee and then things will work out. Right. So I borrowed, uh, I got one of my friends to invest in that business and we booked a hall and then I started to make the calls and people committed to me um, that they would come, but most of them did not show up. You know, on the final day when the event was supposed to happen, my brother did not believe in me. My, I didn't tell my mother. She did not, would not have believed in me. None of my friends, very few of my friends actually believed in me, but most of them wanted to see how it will turn out. And there were some really skeptics, the ones who were really skeptic, skeptical about the whole thing. And they were like, oh, this can never work. You know, you're just 17 years old. How can you teach this? How can you, you know, um, conduct this it's it's a big task right it's not going to happen and so i was a lot under pressure especially when my friend had put in like a thousand dollars to book you know a hall for three days and it was the final day i bought myself a nice suit you know and and i just assumed there will be 400 people in the hall and all i had was like six of my friends who actually showed up with, with the fee, you know, and, um, and my vision was to, to bring in 400 people and that did not happen. So I saw that, that whole incidence and suddenly I broke down, you know, because I promised these guys that I would deliver. I would, I would conduct this program for them and they, their lives would transform, right? I had discovered something in my life, the power of, you know, visualization and programming, and I'm, I was going to teach it to them and how to make their dreams into a reality. Um, but nobody showed up, so I had to cancel the seminar. And I, I returned their money, but it was, it was very traumatic for me to go through that experience where the whole hall is empty and I didn't have things in control and people did not show up. And I was crying and crying and crying and I think I cried for like five, six hours. And my brother was trying to counsel me but I was, was not uh, listening. And the other naysayer also came in and he said, you know, I told you this is not going to work. You should have listened to me. And, uh, but the rest of the people were just silent. They weren't saying anything to me. Um, but it was really me, myself, beating myself up over this little failure that I had. But what I did not acknowledge myself was that at the age of 17, I had this idea and I executed on that idea. And quickly, you know, and then I got frozen up uh, and then I didn't take action. I never, uh, thought about starting another business. I never thought about after that for, you know, a couple of years. Um, 
you know, I, I was just too scared. I was too scared to raise capital. I was too scared to execute. And I was just full of fear of failure. And I wouldn't act because of that. And um, like, but what I did not realize was that I had learned something. And what I had learned was that I need to study about marketing. And I had learned about one of the most important aspects of a business is customers, right? What do the customers want? And how do you communicate with the customers? And how do you communicate with the masses? And how do you bring masses into one room? How does that process work? You know, how do people fill in these spaces, these large businesses? You know, the whole businesses is run around customers. How do you bring customers into the door? I couldn't do it. I was not successful at it. And I, I failed in that area. But I learned something that this is one of the most important things. If I could figure this thing out, if that day I could have figured that thing out, the whole thing would have been a success. And quickly I realized sales and marketing were the gaps that I had in my skill set. And based on the current level of expertise and experience, I acted and I got X result, which was not what I wanted. What I wanted was this, but I got this. And I saw why did I not get this? And the gap is the lesson. The skill gap was the lesson, but there was no way to find that out unless you execute, right? And so I did fail, but I learned something. I got a lesson out of it. And it was very powerful for me because, and it was very painful for me. It was so painful that I did not want to execute on another business until I get this thing down. Okay. And I started to wonder and I started to find some things. And then, then I found out about a marketing course. I did that. Then I launched my e-commerce website. Boom. It also blew up. And this time I lost my own money. So I was happy about that, that I lost mine. And then I really beat myself up. And then I had to go you know, work for my brother for some time, make some money. And then I launched my third business. This time this made a little bit money. And then my fourth business is my healthcare investment company where I really hit it big, you know, negotiating multi-million dollar deals and all of that. But this whole thing took me around like seven to 10 years. And with every business, I learned lessons. And because I did not stop, I am where I am today. And I'm actually fulfilling my dream from nine years ago, speaking to you on this channel and transforming lives and actually having to work with people. So it's a great honor and pleasure and privilege for me to do this is because this was once my dream and I had failed uh, bringing people together. But now I have been successful in the last few months this growth in the channel has happened because I've worked on myself. I've done a whole bunch of courses and I've made sure that I crack this code and I have cracked it. And none of the friends that, um, that did not take that action, they did not crack it. They don't even know that this, this can be a, the problem. They are at a very different level. You know, they're at such a beginning stage, but because I took action, even though I failed, even though I cried, I discovered something. I discovered this skill. You know, I had, I, I discovered the skill gap, so to say, so to speak. And I filled it. I, I saw my weakness got exposed in that moment. And it wasn't a pleasant experience. I had to take a hard look at myself that I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to connect with people. I don't know what people are dealing with. And I'm trying to take very little action and expecting this much result. So my whole sense of proportion as to how much action is required to produce X result has completely shifted. My communication skills are worked on tremendously. My leadership skills are worked on tremendously. My communication skills, persuasion skills, marketing knowledge, marketing skills have transformed tremendously. My understanding about finance and budgeting has, has completely shifted my understanding about risk analysis 
has completely shifted and now I'm able to achieve predictable results because every time I took action, I got something out of it. So the lesson here is that failure is not a permanent state. It's a temporary occurring. It's a very limited occurring. Look, that moment where that failure happened, it's already gone now. I'm not the same person that that kid was. I'm totally a different beast now. You know, so I transformed failure into success. And most of the successes come from failures. If I did not take action and if I did not have failed, I would not be in the position I am in today. So forget the humiliation, forget the crying, forget all of that. The lesson that I got from it and I implemented again and again and I didn't give up. I kept going. I kept, oh, I started another business, another business, another business and I took notes what went wrong and I extracted value out of that situation. So everything in business is based on data, okay, information, right? Experience is just a whole bunch of data. So all the decisions are made based on data. Before you execute, you don't have enough data. Then you go, you test some things, then you get some data. And then the second attempt is better, then you get some more data. And then the third attempt is better, you get some more data. So this whole process is labeled as a failure, but it's not a failure. It's just a process towards success. And it's just a natural step towards success. When you try something at the beginning, you're not going to succeed at it. You may succeed it, but if it's something that's big enough, you will have, you will be exposed to your own weaknesses. And then that would be the time where the project is showing you what you need to work on. You know, this machine that you built did not work. What went wrong? You need to change it and you, you need to go at it again. So, couple of lessons. Failure is not a permanent state. It's a temporary happening. It is only permanent if you stop taking action. If I did not go into business again, then yes, I would have failed in business. But if I keep going on, I went, worked with my brother, made some money, went at it again, came back again, worked with my brother, made some money, went at it again. And I kept doing this over and over again until I succeeded, until I now finally structured business partnerships with billion dollar CEOs, you know, negotiated multi-million dollar deals and like done high, high level of negotiation that was so out of my reach at that point. Um, and I also developed resilience and I also developed this uh, emotional agility towards rejection, you know, this resilience towards rejection and not caring about what people think of me. So not only did I get that lesson, uh, you know, in terms of data and information, but I got, um, you know, something emotional, something, um, you know, mental toughness resilience which i which i did not have at that age which i have now and i can take many more rejections now and no problem right so so with every experience you learn do not label yourself as a failure do not label that thing as a failure it's just testing you're discovering things and you got to go in with that attitude that you're discovering things and you cannot care about what people think of you. They really don't matter, you know. It's your life and you're playing your own game. And the third lesson is that all of this is a game, okay? Whether you do a business or not, you will have food to eat, you'll have a place to stay and you will survive well, okay? Books are very cheap, you will have education, you will have everything. So whether you get into business or not, whether you're doing a job or not, your survival, assuming you are, you can understand what I'm saying, means you're educated, you will survive. <clears throat> you will survive. So survival is not in question. 
in today's time, you can eat, you, you will have a place to stay, but business is about playing a game. I want you to look at this from a standpoint of a game. Because when you look at situation as a game, then it becomes fun and it's, it's, it's not serious anymore. Because that's what it is. Look, we human beings, we are really boring. Uh, we, we are really bored creatures. We have figured out the food problem, you know, I assume you're not dying of hunger or anything, you know, you, you have food to eat, you have a place to stay, right? That's all that the body needs. Rest, everything else is just a creative expression. So your even business is a creative expression. It's, it's a game, you know, from playing with small supercars, now we will be playing with big supercars. From playing with small helicopters, we'll be playing big helicopters. Instead of playing Monopoly on the board, we'll be playing Monopoly in the real life. But it's really a game. So you got to have that as the forefront. And whether you succeed or whether you fail, you're going to die anyway. Right? Uh, and, and that's really like when I'm down, when I feel defeated or when I feel rejected, I just see that, okay, what did not work? I write it down. What worked? I write it down. What needs to be done ahead? And sometimes it's not personal. Sometimes it's not related to you. Sometimes the market situation can be the reason for success or failure. You know, something outside of your control can be the reason. So then you can, once that gets exposed to you, you can then see how you can adapt yourself and go at it again. But if you don't give up, that state of failure will transform. This reminds me of one of the largest financial turnarounds in the history of this world at one point at least uh, it was a financial turnaround that Donald Trump did I think it was the largest he has a Guinness book of world records of largest financial turnaround I think he was in four billion dollars in debt with all of his real estate portfolio and he was about to go bankrupt and he completely turned that situation around and he, he filled that gap of 4 billion and then he made a couple of billion on top. So he really turned that situation around and how he did it is by not giving up. That's why he has a book called Never Give Up. Because if you never give up, he, look, he could have given up, he could have just filed for bankruptcy and then he, he could have lifted his hand and said, I'm not paying this money. But he decided, no, I am going to pay this money. These this is the structure, I, this is how I want to structure the debt going forward. And these are the deals I'm going to bring in and I want more money from you and I'm going to finance these deals and you can take my planes, you can take my yachts, you can pay a little bit um, off the debt and he restructured that whole thing and he said we need some time for the market to turn around, we'll keep buying assets, the assets will go up, we can even do an IPO and the whole situation will transform. He came up with a plan to transform that state of failure into a success. And business is really about turning shit into gold, turning a shitty situation into gold, right? And people in the real estate, they take a shitty house, they transform it, they really make it beautiful, and then they sell it. And that's what success is about, is turning failure into success. So that's the mindset around transforming failure into success. So if you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button and I'll talk to you soon.